bring this meeting to order. <laughs> it's a call to order. Um, so, uh, Jonathan, just so you know, on the um, on the remote participation, um, if you drop off, um, then just like text us if you want us to keep moving and essentially act like you walked out of the room and keep keep uh, doing things. If you don't let us know then we'll be kind of stuck because we need to make sure that board members that are departing actually officially depart the meeting, okay? Yep, sounds good. Yeah, so if, if for any reason you drop or you can't or you know you can't continue or whatever, just, just let us know because we can't do any resolutions past that um, unless you officially done. All right, that sounds good. Okay, cool. Um, we have got uh, the, the last meeting minutes to approve. So that's the first item on the agenda. I have one question. Yeah? Because the draft minutes were approved for submission on 219. Yeah, you know what that is? No. That's Faith being really smart and awesome and creating these template uh, meeting minutes and then inserting a bunch of fields that I can't delete. <laughs> that I have to go look up how to delete in the Word documents, and I, I ran out of time before the meeting to do that. Oh, so, so like the last line. Yeah, I literally can't delete that. Well, well I was just asking what it was. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't quite no, no, sense, I, that thing drives me nuts. You know, I'm nothing if not precise, and that kind of thing just absolutely drives me nuts. <laughs> and I'm like, here's my work. See, it's got bad errors in it. <laughs> well, um, is she saying that she approved the draft no. submission or how, how what no we we had you know just like every board for you know all time we basically approved the minutes um from our previous meeting uh and just, so just read through it make sure we feel like we got everything substantive mm -hmm. um don't worry about you know like dumb right fields in there and stuff like that just that we captured what actually happened. And if there's nothing that we missed, then we'll just, then we'll submit it. Is there a copy of those somewhere? Yeah, I just dropped them in the meeting minutes. Let me, uh, I'll just share them too though. Thanks. Yeah, it is, uh, it is a mountain of security. It is guest and it is wireless is the password. No cats. No cats. Wow. You well, and Basil, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Never mind. We're going to ask. Is there another, like, random thing that's in there that shouldn't be in there well, because of the thing? Well, saying approved, um, th that was the basis of my question was who approved the draft minutes? Nobody no, I just. Nobody has. So I just added the date 219 in there. And I can't change the time right now because of the way that, because the field's messed up anyway. So I'll fix this, but um, we can approve them, you know, we can approve them given format changes or something like that. I mean, we can, we can say they the meeting minutes are approved. We're really just looking at the substance. So you want a motion to approve the minutes? Does anybody have a motion to approve the minutes? No, I'm not it looks like Cardos is spelled wrong um, under new business. Yeah, good. I, nice. Thanks for catching that. I got that. I miss, did anything else get misspelled? Spelled wrong again. Yep. <laughs> cool. Hey. So I've got. Um, I've got the meeting minutes here. Uh, if there's anything else that anybody wants to change, I can change them right away. Um, and then we can make, we can vote on that motion to approve. Anybody, anybody? One last going twice? Okay, there's been a motion on the floor to approve the meeting minutes. Um, any, any nays? We'll do it that way. All ayes? Aye. Aye, okay. 
motion passes. Thank you. Sorry, who moved and seconded? Um, Bill moved, Danielle seconded. Okay, got it. Vice versa, vice notes. versa actually. Oh, vice versa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's the right verse. I don't want to get this figured out. Is it called the Davy Jones rules? That's right. Rob. Yeah. <laughs> what is it called? Robert. Robert's Rules of Order. Robert's Rules of Order. Isn't that the pirate thing? Robert's Rules of Order. Okay. Baby Jones Walker. So we got our. Uh, we've got our first public comment period before we move to our agenda items. If people want to have, we, we try to inject public comment in, uh, in every, um, in, like all over in all of our meetings so that people can come in and leave and stuff if they like, um, and give people an opportunity to talk. Is there any member of the public that's present that would like to comment <laughs> right now? I don't know what your agenda was. I didn't find it online. I'm not on the emailing list. So my first comment would be, how do you put it on your company email list? Wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a. Uh, Thank you. We have a group, and is that Sarah stands next to Bill? That is Sarah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, Sarah, you're supposed to state your name and your address before you talk at all. <laughs> my real address? So we can track you down. Like my residential address? Mm -hmm. uh, back? No. My, okay. My name is Sarah Stans, S-A-R-A-H dot S-T-A-N-D-S at gmail.com. You can use that for my email. <laughs> I live at 217 South E Street, about a block and a half from here. Did you say that was a dash in there? Sarah a dash dot, dot stance. Yeah, or full stop. Country At <laughs> gmail.com. Full stop. Okay, you have been sent an invitation Thank for you. the message board. Um, I, no, I'm hearing careless. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and also, um, so. I don't know if it helps, but uh, I'm a board member on the Montana Renewable Energy Association, um, recently elected. So from a statewide perspective, some of the things that we're working on might be interesting for Livingston's side of things. And then uh, public school board is a meeting by that with the Elson Ben Citizens Council and the Solar Arts Program. So I'm there, so I wanted to hear what you guys are up to and as you are getting your Order. <laughs> We're um, pretty actively soliciting um, sort of agenda items and projects. Okay. Um, we, sh you know, the quickest, easiest way to add that to the queue is just to send an email to the group um, that you just got invited to. Yeah, great. Um, and then we'll we'll try to digest that and have some kind of an efficient way of processing thoughts and recommendations and that sort of thing and add them to agendas and all that. I think. I have a quick question for you. Mm. On the group thing, does she have to sign up for an account too or can she just have be mm. on the mailing list? She's just on the mailing list. Just on the, okay, cool. I yeah, I set that up so that the default is that if you get if you if you get invited and so if you get an invite email like that or if you use um, the in the invite um let's see the join email which is subscribe so if you send an email to this email address here which let me share that piece of it um, oh no i have way too Sorry guys, this is thrilling, I'm sure, to watch me. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, so uh, this is so this is the group.io. Um, and the email address of the group is here. Um, Alexis, do you want to go? Yeah. Okay. And then um, you 
can subscribe here. So we'll add this to our city website as well here shortly. Um, and then unsubscribe. Uh, but if you send an email to subscribe or unsubscribe, you just get joined. You just join. And by default, uh, public members can get a notification for literally every email that we trade back and forth if they so choose. But by default, you get um, uh, announcement, yeah, special news emails. Okay, so you don't send out a daily summary? Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know the password? 30 emails a day, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, do I need to join this group? group? I also have to I think you can just reply and say, cool, and oh, okay. it, it, it. it does it. Yeah. I know, number, that's so powerful. It sure is nice. <laughs> wow. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So um, let's move on to the, if it's okay, I'd like to move on to the, um, the next agenda items. Um, and I want to knock these out of the way before we get too far along. Um, there's Jonathan. We've got a. So the agenda items that I wanted to talk about were uh, resolutions. So this is just the stuff that you remember. We, so we had a working meeting last week. We talked all. Of, it was obnoxiously boring, but we did get through how we're going to communicate. We talked through the remote participation policy uh, and the message board was mainly the two things. And so I was hoping that we could just get a resolution, um, sort of adopting those as our ways of doing things. Um, to just show that yes, we are you know committed to this message board instead of emails, and yes, we are committed to having a remote participation at every meeting. Um, so this is a pretty simple resolutions. Um, you know, we can play with the policies a little bit if we want to. I didn't distribute the remote participation policy document that I've been working on. Um, I think I think I did like a couple of revisions back, but you know, here it is, here it is. Um, we could, we could also vote to adopt this. Um, but if y'all want a chance to review it first, we can just table that for the next meeting. Um, it's like four pages long. So I think we need to review it first before. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. At least have the opportunity. Yeah. To um, not expect people to read it during the meeting. Um, but so the, the language of the resolution I was hoping we could get is just, you know, we, um, uh, to resolve to, to have remote participation in our meetings from now going forward and another resolution to adopt the message board as our official communication channel, uh, between each other and with the public. Um, does anybody want to discuss the language of those resolutions or any of that? Um, or kind of the intent behind them, or can we just maybe put them forward? Okay, so I'll make a motion to adopt it to um, to have remote participation at every meeting going forward. I second it. Okay. Right. Any seconds? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Jonathan, what's your vote? Aye. Good. <laughs> All right, that passes. And then I'd like to make a resolution to uh, uh, adopt the message boards, our official communications um, between each other as well as uh, with the public at large. I second our motion to adopt that message board. <laughs> Danielle seconds that, that motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Yes. Uh, all right, Jonathan, yes. Okay, thanks, guys. The final one is, um, again, just uh, city commission recommendation. Um, there was a lot of talk about Thursday, uh, second Thursdays being very inconvenient for a couple of people. And so 
when we did our doodle polls regarding the um, working meeting and the meeting uh, today, there was a lot more participation that was possible on Wednesdays. Um, and so I was just going to offer up that we could just add, we could just change our bylaws to do it the second Wednesday of every um, of every month and just have that the official meeting time and um, then also checking in on five o'clock instead of 530 so that we can get in here get our work done and get back for dinner and other things before. Did we check other meeting time? <clears throat> Yes, so there's no conflict okay. on that calendar, right? We don't get kicked out. Faith sent me the city county calendar with a screenshot of what's going on in those days. It's pretty light, and uh, there's no city board meeting on, that, on those days that I know of at that time. Second, so it's second Wednesday of every month, and this would be a recommendation to the city commission to change our bylaws to do that. Um, so anybody with proposed to move? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Amy, Amy seconds. Jonathan, any input on that? Before we... um, so are we allowed to be just doing this stuff when it's not on the agenda? Well, it is actually on the agenda because it, the agenda from our working meeting was is also part of the agenda for this meeting. It, per the official notice. That's a really good question, Jonathan. I'm glad you're keeping on keeping us honest. It was also on the agenda to change the meeting time from last in our last official meeting. Yes. So the agenda that I have from Faith doesn't have any of that. That's fun to hear. <laughs> and where I right, this might be a dumb question, but where can we get the agenda for the meeting today? Yeah. I'm looking online on the on the web page. I'm not seeing it. Yeah. So she's been posting it on notice on notices. Okay. So it's not anywhere it's like the like... official city notice channel. We got emailed it from Faith on February 10th. Also. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If that's not on, I guess we can't do that. But it's. Well, I feel, yeah, yep, you're right, if it's not on there, but what I saw, you've got board communication tools discussion. Yeah, if that's, if, if the board communication tools discussion is on there. Well, it's marked as a discussion, not a discussion decision, so that is probably not um, something we could do because it is marked as a discussion. So we just have to, what about our- I think we just have to put all this on the agenda for next time. What about our meeting time? I'm, I think that that would be something that you officially would have to put on the agenda because when the city did that, when I was at the enterprise, I, they had to have a meeting that, that where they like, they had to put it on their agenda and everything. I'm pretty sure it was already on the agenda. I feel like I'm bound to see it. Oh, this is the commission packet. Um, yeah, I'm really glad that you're can, paying attention to this. I just want to make sure. Can we change it for next time and then we can put it on the agenda to officially change it? Because yeah. we changed it through email the time before, right? This isn't the time we were supposed to be, the day we were supposed to be. We can change it as like a one-off, but to change the policy, we think we have to change, do like an official motion and everything, and that has to be put on the agenda. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's keep ourselves honest. <laughs> Um, let's do, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure that's correct. Yeah. I'm I, pretty sure it is on the agenda. I, we well, talked, that's, we that's what I thought. Last time. That's what I thought. I'm just trying to, I, I Don't mean, argue with you, Jen. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, it's, it's just not on the agenda that the city sent out, which is the right. official agenda. Really? Um, 
All right, so Faith sent out. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, Give me just a second. It's there. So that's where we need to list it because that's kind of the thing. Change it. Yeah, I got this one. Talk about changing everything for you. That was definitely discussed. Okay, so she, okay, here it is. So she has new, so we've got new business. Under under the agenda that she sent out, which I, I do have up on the screen, so I'll just share that. Oh, it, I found it in my email. So we've got Thursday, March 19th, 530, 730 in the West Room. Um, new business is Alexis and McRae, and then board communication tools. Uh, so that is in the agenda. Input to the agenda items in the queue, which we probably won't get to, and then identify opportunities for subcommittees. So we don't have an official change of our time. Mm -hmm. So um, let's let's do that. Let's let's uh, make a motion to put a, an official change of our time to a vote at our next regular board meeting. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> I you second that, that motion? I second that, yeah, sorry. Before we even get to the, is there anybody that has a problem with that time? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, this is, this, it is what it is. <laughs> We're going to comply with enthusiasm. That's how we do this. Yay. <laughs> okay, enthusiasm. Okay, so uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's added to the agenda for the next one. And then, can, so can we change the date now of the next one? Uh, yes, we can. Jonathan, can you forward that to me? Because it didn't attach the agenda. Oh, yeah, sorry. And Faith never sent me anything. Yeah. It's from the 10th. I think that's what John said. Yeah, I'll forward it. Or he's he's got it. Yeah. Jonathan's Jonathan's on it. The only one online that I Yeah, I got it. Thanks, Jonathan. March. Even though it says February. All right. Oh, so she's got the that's that's, that's that for the time she has the wrong thing. Because this yeah, this is all it has. It doesn't even have any old business. All right, so. <laughs> okay, so I, I motion to move the next meeting to. That's fine. You can, you can offer. I know, but I said that, and I don't know what the date is. So the next official, next official meeting would be um, March 11th. At, and is it 5 o'clock? Any problem? Mm -hmm. 5 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, we can. We can go ahead and do that since we're in there. It's a little out of order, but no, it doesn't matter that much. So let's just next our next. So the the motion on the floor is to move our next meeting to the 11th at 5:30. <laughs> at five. five. At five o'clock, rather. Um, do I get a second? A second. <laughs> <laughs> Amy put the motion out. I don't. <laughs> I never Anybody want to second it? Second. Okay, it's been seconded by Danielle. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. aye. Okay, Jonathan? Yes. Okay, <laughs> passes. All right, let's get on to the next, uh, to the next thing. Um, <laughs> I know. Because, because, <laughs> No, it's, I mean, this is important. We'll get used to it, right? Um, so uh, the, on the official agenda is Alexis's report. So why don't we just get to that? Yeah, let's do that. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at other potential resolutions associated with Alexis afterwards. <laughs> um, All right. Okay. Let me I'm share this. Do you want to? Just the one that you dropped in the drop. Yeah, folder. that's it. Do you want the um, 
uh, inventory or the uh, brochure first? The inventory. I had printed out the brochure. There's only six of them, so fight amongst yourself. I got one. Actually, there might just be six people who found them. They're all the same ones. Yeah. Oh, so you got one up from there. Yeah. Um, <sighs> set this up and then there's one for John. Cool, John. Hey, there's <laughs> one for you, John. Then, uh, the the uh, it's not really important right now, just I figured if you wanted it for fun, yeah. So, she just she just gave us it's a greenhouse gas brochure and it's it's in the energy core drop folder on Google Drive and then we'll move it to the official review stuff after this. Let me share that. Jonathan, will you confirm? Can you actually see it? Yes, I can. Good. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> Alexis, you have the floor. Okay. Uh, one thing before I get started, um, there is a new Energy Corps person coming. Uh, she's coming in six days on the 25th. Oh. So there'll be overlap between me and her. So you guys will presumably meet her at the next meeting. Um, so. Now you don't have to worry <laughs> about there will be another me coming. Um, okay. What's her name? Uh, her name is Lexi. So really? yeah, actually we have the same first name, Alexandra, but I guess different nicknames. So very much the the new name. Cool. We were joking that this should be one and two. And I was like, as long as I get one. <laughs> okay. Oh, you skipped my fun title slide. Oh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Greenhouse gas inventory. So this is what I've been working on for the past four months and change, basically since October. Um, yeah. So first things first, what is a greenhouse gas inventory? Uh, greenhouse gas inventory is an estimate of the amount of greenhouse gas emissions produced by an institution over a set period of time. An institution could be a business, it could be a government, it could be a school district, uh, a community, basically anybody who is interested in finding out the greenhouse gas emissions potentially could, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the greenhouse gas emissions inventory typically measures six greenhouse gases. And the reason that they measure these six is that these are the ones um, regulated by the Kyoto Protocol, which is the uh, UN agreement between basically every country in the world to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So basically, we care about these greenhouse gas emissions because these are the ones that governments care about. Um, but even though um, the inventory measures these six gases, everything is reported in the results as uh, metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents. And the reason for this is that every greenhouse gas has a different global warming potential. Um, and a global warming potential is just how much basically each greenhouse gas warms, like one ton of each greenhouse gas warms the atmosphere over generally 100 years. And that's in comparison to carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is what I think most everybody thinks of as like the default greenhouse gas, which is good because it's actually scientifically sort of considered the default greenhouse gas. So carbon dioxide has a greenhouse uh, global warming potential of one, but something like methane has a global warming potential of 28 to 36 times that of CO2. And then like nitrous oxide is something like 265 times. And then there's other ones like sulfur hexafluoride is like 10,000 times more global warming potential than carbon dioxide. So that's why it's all converted into these carbon dioxide equivalents. So you can tell that even if something reduce, produces a small amount of methane, it's going to warm the atmosphere comparatively a lot more than that same amount of carbon dioxide. Okay, uh, so now that we sort of know what a greenhouse gas inventory is, how do you do it? Uh, so the first thing you have to do is you have to choose your type of inventory. And there's generally two types of in inventories, community or government operations. A community inventory basically draws a, bound, a boundary and then looks at every greenhouse gas produced within that boundary. So that would include residential, industrial, commercial, government, basically everything that you can think of. Whereas the government operations inventory is a lot smaller and it only covers emissions that a government has operational control over. So like government buildings, government um, cars, that sort of thing. Uh, go into the next slide. 
Um, so for Livingston Park County, we chose to do a government operations inventory, um, basically because as city and county governments, they were interested in the emissions that they themselves can produce, knowing like residential emissions are interesting, but they're not super useful to them. And also it's a lot smaller, and so it's something that like I could do um, in like, the time that I have here. And then you also have to, after choosing the type, you have to choose your baseline year. So for ours, we chose 2018, and that's because ba the baseline year that you choose is generally just the most recent year for which you have completely available data. I started doing my inventory in October of 2019, so 2018 was the most recent year. Um, after that, you have to collect and compile your data, and this is the thing that takes the most amount of time. This is the thing that I spent months on. Basically, it's just uh, going around and getting, going through electricity bills or gas invoices, or I wrote up a employee commute survey to see like how city and county employees get to work. Um, you know, going and figuring out like the details of like, how do we treat our wastewater? Where do we ship our recycling or our landfills um, solid waste to? So basically it was just sort of like, how does the government work? Um, and then you take all of that and you put in a giant spreadsheet. Um, and so you can go to the next one. And so after you have all of your data, you have to figure out how you want to present it, how you want to analyze it. So we chose these seven sectors um, just because they're sort of like a, the like city county operations at a glance. Like this is where we, we spend, like this is in like energy terms what the city county does. Okay, so now onto the results. So uh, Livingston Park County combined produces about 12,365 metric tons of carbon dioxide a year, um, which is my favorite one is it's about 68 rail cars worth of coal. So if you see any of the coal trains coming through town, you can imagine like if the city county just like took like one and a half of those uh, trains and started just like shoveling the coal into a giant boiler, like that's the equivalent CO2 that they produce every year. Um, but so this number is cool, but it's also a little bit misleading um, because you see the giant 47% solid waste number. Um, it's hard because this is a government operations inventory. And so technically all solid waste in the county is under government operations, but it's not all produced by the government. So this solid waste, the 47% includes the approximately 19,000 tons of solid waste collected by the city and county and then shipped up to Great Falls. So while everything else in this pie chart is the emissions of the like 250 people who work for the city and county, the solid waste is for the 16,000 people who live in the county. So it's a little bit misleading, which is why I have this one next to it. Um, which has taken out those 19,000 tons. So this is sort of the full picture of what just city county operations produce. And it's about 6,667 metric tons. So um, a yeah. clarifying question on the mm -hmm. wastewater, mm -hmm. since that's the second biggest, yeah. or the biggest one when you take that out, is that wastewater essentially the CO2 equivalent um, footprint of wastewater management coming from just government buildings? Um, no. So actually, I'm about okay. to get into that. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, wastewater is really big. It's 50%, 50 and most of that is from septic systems in the county. Um, so it was, if you, so septic systems, they're, they're about, um, let's see, 66% of all of the wastewater emissions, and that's mostly methane. Um, so it's not a lot of methane, but methane is a lot more potent than carbon dioxide. And then 30% of that is just electricity use by the water reclamation facility and then sewage pumps. And so the thing with that is wastewater in the same way also um, does depend on like the wastewater of everybody in the city and the county. But for something like the wastewater treatment plant, reducing waste, like reducing the production of wastewater doesn't actually really affect electricity use. It basically has like one level that the wastewater treatment plant runs at, and it doesn't matter like how much you're producing, that's the amount of electricity it uses. Um, and when they built their wastewater treatment plant, they basically overbuilt it on purpose. So it's built for 12,000 people, um, sort of anticipating um, uh, population growth. So yeah, um, it is a little bit misleading with the septic systems, um, but even if you take that out, you still have, um, it would be 
uh, a large amount of the electricity uses from the water reclamation facility. Um, so then after wastewater, the next biggest ones are buildings and facilities and vehicle fleet, and those are fairly straightforward. Um, there, you know, the natural gas and the electricity use of buildings and facilities, and then also the like gas and diesel use of city county vehicles. Um, one thing to note, though, is that for stuff like solid waste, which is this one, and for wastewater, or for all the sectors, I basically sort of lumped together everything that has to do with the sector. So like for solid waste, the refuse trucks are included in the solid waste sector. They're not included in the vehicle fleet sector. I just did that because I basically, when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, if we collected less solid waste, we would, we would be running these trucks less. So that's why it's in that sector instead of um, vehicle fleet, which would be like, you know, the city attorney driving around or like that, or the, the maintenance trucks, that kind of stuff. Um, and then after that is water, which is all just uh, electricity from water pumps. And then um, you have solid waste, street lights, and employee commute, which are all 2% of the rest of the uh, emissions inventory. And street lights, that's the Gardner and Livingston street lights. And then the employee commute is um, how people get to work. And it was interesting, actually, when I did this employee commute, that the average commute distance for city of Livingston employees is like 3.84 miles. And 90% 90, 90 of them are driving in single occupancy vehicles. And then for Park County, the average commute distance is like 9.6 miles, but only 76% of them are in single occupancy vehicles. So for some reason, the people in Park County, don't commute, they don't like driving alone as much as, <laughs> as the people in the city, even though they have a, a longer commute distance on average, um, which is interesting. So when I was presenting it to Shannon and Park, there was some fun, I was like, you could have some fun rivalries with this between like the city and county employees and seeing, you know, who can, who can get out of their cars the most. Um, cool, so you can go to the next slide. Uh, so now that I have this inventory, uh, sort of what do you do with it? Um, one thing that you could do with it could be uh, comparing costs versus emissions across sectors. So that's like these two um, pie charts on the, I guess my left. Uh, this is from the city of Red Lodge's um, baseline emissions assessment and it compares emissions by sector and then also costs by sector um, and that's interesting because it can help you see the impact of your like efficiency measures or energy saving measures so if you go into the next slide um, this is that the that information in graph form is just a little easier to see so you could see something like buildings and facilities for them produces the most amount of greenhouse gases but it's only the third most expensive sector whereas wastewater treatment um, is second in greenhouse gases, but by far their most expensive sector. And so if you're, let's say, the City Conservation Board, and you're looking at, hey, somehow we had $20,000 to spend on, you know, like energy efficiency measures, and we could spend them on like improving the wastewater treatment plant or spend them on like putting in LEDs in all the city county buildings, this like cost versus emissions can help you say, if you're like, I'm interested in reducing emissions, you can go and say, well, spending this $20,000 in buildings and facilities would really help us cut emissions. But maybe if you have to go in front of the like city commission and they're really interested in saving money, you can say, hey, if we spend $20,000 on energy efficiency, we're gonna be saving like a lot of money in wastewater treatment. So just this sort of data I think is, is useful in being able to like figure out where the best bang for your buck is, um, depending on what you value. Uh, go into the next one. So, or after that, you could um, expand the government operations inventory and turn it into a community uh, inventory, which I think would be really interesting for like community engagement and getting people to sort of think about their own energy use. Um, you know, you can get stuff from Northwest Energy and from Park Electric, um, and the data is floating around out there, and I don't think it would be super hard to do, but it is, it's unclear about how useful it would be. Um, I think it'd be useful for people to be like, wow, like that's a lot of emissions. But for something like vehicle use, I think it would be really hard to tease out what is Park County and what is just the general public, especially because of Park County borders Yellowstone. So probably you're gonna have, I, I mean, I don't know, but I'd say probably the majority of trips, you know, in Park County are people going to Yellowstone. Um, and so it's, it's like, cool, interesting. We have a lot of tourists, 
So like there's there's not a lot that you can do there with that data. So I think it's interesting, but it's also like you know unclear how useful that data would be. And then um, one thing that I am going to be doing is I'm going to be writing up a report on how I did this, uh, what data I used, um, what program I used, and um, what it means. And uh, that hopefully will, will be useful when in five years somebody comes and says, hey, we've done all these really cool, you know, uh, renewable energy projects and energy efficiency measures and stuff. I wonder if it's, you know, been working and somebody comes and decides to do another uh, greenhouse gas inventory. And uh, just me writing up my methods will help them do it in a similar way so they don't like accidentally omit some, you know, giant emissions thing and then everybody thinks they're doing really good when they actually forgot about it. Um, and then also drawing up the energy action plan, which is uh, hopefully um, what you guys will be doing. I, that is um, the... <laughs> that is the planning board meeting. Dang. <laughs> Somebody okay. is angry about how they're being Our meeting isn't quite. Yeah. Mark, <laughs> would you please um, close that door? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And this has a typo, or it's wrong. It's supposed to be the second Wednesday. But you guys all know that. So yeah. yeah. For um, the previous discussion. Um, on your on your data and methodology and all that stuff, um, uh, I would be very interested in seeing the the raw work. Yeah. I so the, the all the Excel spreadsheets, all the other stuff, yeah, it's everything. Basically, one giant Excel spreadsheet. Awesome. With like forty different tabs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and That's lots great. of background map. I did not do this Excel sheet. That would make me look really, really good. Uh, I wish that I had done it, but it's a uh, computer. Um, I am not that skilled. Um, I just I think that that would you know in order for us to really get into um, mm -hmm. efficiency. Uh, yeah. The, especially the, the dollars efficiency that you're mm -hmm. referring to and everything, you definitely need yeah. a, a little bit more granularity and fidelity. Yeah. So uh, where you found this information is very cool. Did you, um, I can show you the like, oh, I guess I'll show it to you up here. But like here, this is the table of contents of it. So everything here is an uh, actual sheet that you have to, that like does something. Mm -hmm. um, so like here, so this is where you enter data. So this is for stationary combustion, like natural gas use. And then it has your data here. And then- Did you create this? No, no, this is from the EPA. Um, and then, yeah, sorry, this isn't super useful. But so this is the, like how they calculate it. And so the nice thing is on the sheet is that you can, they do all the math in front of you. So nothing is hidden. So you can say, how did they get that number? And then go look and realize how they got that number. Would you be willing to submit that with a, this presentation? Uh, yeah. After, yeah, I can probably do a copy of it somehow. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's too big. I've emailed it before, so it should probably be fine. Um, I have three of them, actually, because I have one for the city and one for the county and then one for combined. Um, so, yeah. Anybody has any questions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, since I live in a condo mm -hmm. and there are 12 units, mm -hmm. how do you break that down to the individual? Well, for so I just did government operations, so I didn't do. Um, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so I think on this, let me see what this Yeah, it has per capita. So yeah. here, let me show you. Can you keep that's, going? Keep that's going. That's in here somewhere. Yeah, right? keep going. Here we go. So. Basically, per capita isn't really useful in a vacuum. It's useful to, for comparing us to other towns mm -hmm. um, because basically these are all like government operations, um, CO2 production mm -hmm. divided by the number of people who live in the town. So it's a really oh, rough okay. metric. So like yeah. you don't actually produce, you know, 0.4 metric tons of CO2 per year, yeah. but it's useful to compare Livingston to like Whitefish and see like, whoa, Whitefish they have 0.24, they're doing a lot better on average than us, whereas like Red Lodge, okay, they're 0.82, you know, so we're sort of like, seems like in floating around in the middle of a lot of the towns in Montana. Um, and I had some theories about it, um, at least for like the Red Lodge and the Missoula numbers is for Red Lodge, I mean, it's smaller than us, but I think to be a government and to be like a functioning town, there's sort of a baseline level of 
services that you have to offer. Like you still have to have a city hall. You still have to have a wastewater treatment plant. So I think it would be, and I don't think emissions like decrease proportionally with population. I, I don't think they increase proportionally with population, but at least for the government, because like I think Missoula can probably could administer a certain number of people and like a certain size government. And I don't think it's like a one-to-one -one ratio of government getting, getting bigger to get bigger. Yeah. Um, and, and their buildings, they are so expensive. The ratio is so much larger because mm -hmm. of the sort of treatment is so much lower per instance. Yeah. Like they're not prepared to treat wastewater for 12,000 people. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it looks like they need to do a lot of work on their buildings because it's actually just kind of like on where most of the sewage is coming from. Yeah. So. So the numbers on there are different than on here. Is there a reason for that? Uh, yeah, so that one includes solid waste. This one doesn't. So basically every other mm -hmm. government inventory in the state doesn't include solid waste um, because generally um, it's one to two percent of government emissions. So like when I took out the 19,000 tons that are produced by residents of Park County, the solid waste emissions went down to two percent. And that basically includes fracking um, and the, uh, the electricity and natural gas used for electric transportation. And that's pretty consistent across all government operations is that solid waste is a really small percentage of the CO2 produced. So a lot of them just didn't bother even to calculate it. Um, so I took it out to be more basically comparable because nobody here is including, like Missoula is not including the like tons of trash produced by everybody who lives in their city limits. So and that's, but that's what this number is. Yeah, that's what this number is. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, it's like the brochure is showing something different than what's up here. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't really see what's up there now because I'm black. But <laughs> it would need to be like four times bigger. So but we're going to have that. access to that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's on the, it's, the drive. It's, it's in all, the Google Drive already. Yeah. But we'll, we'll move it. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to move it to the reviewed things so you know we can we can actually use it as input to our process. Yeah. Um I, mean, I I have a diff maybe a difficult yeah. question. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um the so this inventory is limited to government impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In your digging around mm -hmm. did you get a sense of what percentage of the Livingston community at large's emissions mm. were. Um, here's um, relative to, I guess, relative to the government. Mm. No, I haven't. I mean, I have numbers for residential and maybe commercial energy use or electricity use and natural gas use, but I haven't. I've really only been been looking at um, the government stuff, so I don't know like a like how. It's gonna be fairly hard to gather. Yeah. Northwestern Energy has it. Yeah, like you can get it from Northwestern. I think I already have Northwesterns. It's I mean it's a super huge overview. Right. It's like every single person who lives in this area on the grid. Yeah, together. Like, you know, it doesn't separate it at all. And then it doesn't include the county. It doesn't include if you're on Park Electric. Right. Um, if you have to go to Park Electric, I don't know if they give that. The Pose Valley there. So. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I think the biggest thing to do for a community inventory would be to get electricity and natural gas use and to get vehicle data. And I think you can get it from like the Montana Department of Transportation because they do traffic surveys or traffic like the little lines on the road you drive over. Well and they might also have yeah. registration information. Yeah. I don't know how much of that is public. So I mean people other other cities and towns in Montana have done it. So I'm sure there's like methodology there for how they've done it. Um I haven't looked into it a lot because I haven't been doing it. But there's a lot I mean there are other ways the, yeah. the Yellowstone visitor survey Mm. is a great way um, to yeah, inventory how many cars are going in through the north entrance and make some assumptions about that. Right? Yeah. They can be pretty good assumptions. Um, I, I, I guess the reason I'm asking the, mm -hmm. the bigger question of Livingston versus Park County yeah. is it, in the sense of a scale, it really helps us to understand if the community at large mm -hmm. um, 
you know, okay, so why do you do a greenhouse gas emission mm -hmm. inventory to begin with? Because you care about greenhouse gas emissions. Um, if the community at large creates some greenhouse gas uh, emission goals, mm -hmm. like a climate action plan or something like that, mm -hmm. then where do we focus mm -hmm. our collective energy? Yeah. Um, and as you said before, the focusing our time on things that have a positive impact on emissions um, may require us to look more at the community at large and you know, all kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. Building codes, um, mm -hmm. uh, voluntary energy efficiency upgrade programs, and you know, all kinds of things mm -hmm. like that. And I'd just be curious um, if you felt like there was, in your digging, if, if there was a path to getting some of that. Mm, yeah, well, I think one thing, and this isn't, doesn't really answer your question, but one thing that, one opportunity that I was seeing is in talking to a lot of people who work in the city and the county, they're all like pretty universally stoked and like, you know, reducing emissions and like energy efficiency and that kind of stuff. I mean, for various reasons, like some people are like, oh, we can save money. Some people are like, yeah, I really, you know, want to reduce emissions. Um, but it's all sort of like, you know, lucky that that person's there. Like, it's all sort of piecemeal. There's no like overarching like consideration written into um, bylaws, written into ordinances, but written into, you know, that kind of stuff. And so it's like, it's nice that we have people who are interested in it. It's really good, but like, there's no guarantee that if everybody from the government in the city county was fired tomorrow and all new people were put in, that that would still be a focus. And so I think that is a place that I saw that is a good opportunity. Is that there's lots of places where things could be written into procedures and like written like, I know like, Shannon is really interested in if they're going to upgrade. He's really interested in electric cars and like trying to figure out how to like get their fleet to like more electric vehicles. Um, and, but if that happened, it would only happen because Shannon is interested in it. It wouldn't happen because like in their vehicle procurement policy, it's written down that you should like price out alternative fuel vehicles over gas vehicles. Um, so, so those are some like opportunities is like, okay, writing it into, into process and the policy so that somebody who like doesn't care about it is still, is still um, considering it. So I just heard a recommendation from you. Yes, yes. Did anybody else hear that? <laughs> yes. Which is that the vehicle procurement mm -hmm. policy for the city should include a prompt for pricing out electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Which is adding other... some environmental policies to the city. Yeah. 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 But that, not just, yeah, yeah like that was one example. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. I mean, there's other stuff. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, that's great. But yeah. boy, we got to grab any things yeah. as they come up, right? Yeah. I mean, you've been through this and you're leaving in three weeks, right? We, we need to know. Yeah. Um, you can also send us an email <laughs> to the to the conservation board thing with some very specific recommendations yeah. that just come from Alexis, the Energy Corps person. This isn't like a, um, but, but, you know, things mm -hmm. where, especially you've seen in city procedures and stuff mm -hmm. that you think that there's opportunity for that. Um, that would be wonderful. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. My question is, what's missing from the sectors? Um, mm -hmm. And as an example, I see procurements and the greater supply chain having mm -hmm. more of an emissions mm -hmm. output for our town rather than our internal operations. Mm -hmm. So where we get everything, where does our food come from? Yeah. Um, you know, what about all that transportation? So I would see, you know, could you not write something in environmental policy of you know, procurement of vehicles or the procurement of everything we use mm -hmm. and where that's coming from? So is that like what sector is not being included? Is that accounted for in anything um, that you looked at or any city doing anything like that? Or kind of I don't really know exactly what you mean. Like I guess it's hard because it's like the way that the inventory it does include some things. So like, for example, the solid waste sector includes solid waste landfilled outside the city or like recycling plant outside the 
city. So we send all our solid waste up to Great Falls. So it includes the 170 miles driven up to Great Falls. It includes like all the emissions that aren't happening in Park County, they're happening up in Great Falls. Right, right. And same thing with the recycling is that it gets sent like 45 miles to Belgrade. But there's, and then there are some sites like there's fertilizer use by the like city is one that they, is a sector that I could have included. And that takes into account like emissions are produced, are created when you produce fertilizer elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they're, it's used by the city. So, you know, in some way the city is, is causing those emissions to be produced. But I didn't include that just because it, it would be a very small uh, portion of our emissions. And I could have theoretically gotten the data, but it would have taken a lot of arm twisting. And yeah. They don't actually keep track of like, how much they like they buy it but it's not like they have like you know it's not something they really keep track of they sort of buy it on an ad hoc basis and right. like you know so for so. example like where does all the fuel come from yeah so we use it and we calculate how much we use yeah it doesn't we don't, we don't yeah, calculate it doesn't, how, much, how does it get to Montana yeah exactly it just right. is like the actual emissions being produced by the vehicles right um yeah I think that's hard because you could could very quickly like be like okay so now where are the vehicles produce, where are the parts of where the vehicles yeah. produce, like, yeah. goes Just all the way back to the mining. Like, if yeah. you go to yeah. the pure procurement yeah. side of things, that yeah. might be something you want to look at, but maybe it wasn't yeah. in the scope I know of what your project already, was. Um, for procurement, there's already in, I don't know if it's like an actual law or anything, but basically to always try to go American made, that's mostly just for like, yeah, America reasons mm -hmm. and less for like environmental reasons. And also a lot of times uh, the city can get grants or like rebates on using American made stuff. Um, so and that's all in the city. Yeah. So something you can leverage. So if we buy parts. So like that was like yeah. things yeah. like <laughs> when they built the environment for America. Yeah, exactly. When they put the solar system stuff in or they um, you know, they got like rebates from using um, like solar panels for like gotten from an like pure from an American company. I mean, where that American company got the solar panels. Yeah, that was yeah, the that exactly. I was misleading is like some of our automobile manufacturers yeah. make all of their vehicles in Mexico, which whatever. Um, but that's not an American made yeah. vehicle if you're gonna go down to the nitty gritty environmental yeah. part of it. Um I wondered about uh the next person coming in mm -hmm. and whether you know or in part I would assume based on your recommendations mm -hmm. what that person is going to concentrate on mm -hmm. or do has that been determined yet? Um sort of I think they really they're really looking for somebody who's also like a data e person, um, which she seems to be. Um, she also has apparently like a lot of experience with um, composting and like um, basically like solid waste and alternative waste management systems, mm -hmm. which I think is something that um, like Shannon is really looking into. He's really trying to like trying to figure out about if like compost could work or if um, there's lots lot of ideas. Of, I have a lot of yeah. thoughts on that. There's lots of ideas like. There's some stuff that they have thought about doing before that they've run into economics yeah. problem. Like I was like, okay, what about you know have different sized garbage cans for collection and charge people more money for bigger sizes? And then he was like, yeah, we thought about that, but then you have, like the garbage trucks can only take like the arm can take one size can, so we can't do multiple size cans. Well, everyone already has the trash can, so that yeah. you have to buy a new trash can. Yeah, exactly that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some stuff where you're like, this seems really basic, but then like, mm -hmm. in actually an execution, it's like harder than. In the solar on the way, the uh, wastewater. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a figure. I'm it's kind of puzzled. Like, how much uh, is a solar taking up with electricity? How much produce electricity does it um, do? Do you know? It's. It's a, a like a 40 kilowatt system. Mm -hmm. It's it's been on for years. Okay, <laughs> it's I'm working on the, the solar panel system. It, it's a it's only 40. 
think it was 50. I think it, they wanted to do 50. I don't know, I was just out there and they said it was a like almost 40 kilowatt system. So yeah. Yeah. I, I know, I thought it was supposed to be 52. It's supposed to be 50. I don't know. Maybe so it hasn't gotten The percentage isn't not very much. Then. Oh no, it's a very small percentage. Well, I, I heard 4%. Yeah, I, that sounds like it could yeah. be right. Because that certain, and, and Shannon apparently, from what I understand, is interested in doing more with yeah that. when they built it they left room for ex expansion so like yeah. it's three rows of panels right now mm -hmm. i think 18 panels on each row um and they left room for two more rows in front um so they just have to get the, the money for it so there is some preparation yeah I mean, so the sooner the better so yeah to speak. So yeah. he actually. Um, Whether or not we would have any input into yeah. something like that or not, at least we're aware. Does that mean that they're going behind the grid then? Because they're only allowed 50. Yeah, I think that's. So I don't know if you know this, but Northwest Energy yeah. only allows 50, 50 kilowatts per meter. Yeah. So if they're up to 40, then they can only add 10 more kilowatts. Yeah. So that would bring it to like 5%. Yeah. So well, they won't. They won't be able. They have to literally disconnect. They have to. They, 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 they have can't to go off grid and yeah. power it. Um, yeah. 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 Unless there's a state law change. Yeah. <laughs> and no, so yeah, we're working on that. Yeah, state law. Mm -hmm. Northwest Energy law. Well, PSC forces yeah, them the PSC. to. Yeah, it's the PSC. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so last week, the uh, com the company who installed it was on site to. On-site was on-site. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, on-site energy, yeah. It was there to sort of give everybody a run-through and like show everybody just, I mean, they don't really have to do anything with it, um, but basically just show everybody how it works. And Shannon basically asked him for a bid for what two more rows would look like. Um, not because he has the money, but because I guess there's like budget stuff going on. And so he wants to see if he could get it written into the budget of the public works. Yeah. You can have the behind the meter, so that was like, take it for granted. Take your advantage? Yes. Uh, take it for granted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can do behind the meter. You don't need, to, you don't actually don't need batteries in this thing. You can just go fully behind the meter and have it completely negate your energy use. And Northwest Energy can't say anything about it. Because they're not net metering. Net metering is really for when you're going to be like using your entire amount of energy you use all year and you need to like produce extra during the summer to make up for the winter but if you're going to run behind the meter and you know how much you produce at all times like you said mm -hmm. wastewater doesn't change yeah um, it doesn't turn off doesn't turn off yeah. so it's just yeah it would be a very change. easy application like you need a meter, but the high flow like yeah. the, the put in any like five thousand dollars to do a year's worth of high flow most put in you do have to calculate and print how much you're going to put in for a year. Yeah, but you just take your bill on that. I need some work with more data than that. No, I'm mm -hmm. a certified solar installer. Yeah, you do not need any more data than that. Okay. Oh, to go for to go behind the meter. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't exceed what you're using. Yeah, I have no need. Uh oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, can I? Uh, let's see. Yeah, do I have to What's the official? Boy, I should have looked this the up. Official handshake. What's the official uh, board member exit policy? I think uh, we just. <laughs> I have to look that up. Say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say goodbye. <laughs> Jonathan, I'm sorry. Do you know the rules on that? On what? If if, <laughs> if Bill is leaving. Uh, and we. I mean, we just smaller. put down the time and say he left. Fine. All right. <laughs> yeah. Put down the time and say you left. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. Bill thanks, left. Jonathan. So I'll put that down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have a good night. That. Watch the video. This, yeah, you can watch the video. Yeah. I think um, also just it is worth noting that it is about an hour and 15, which we said was our policy um it's for notice till 7 30 so it's no problem but just yeah. if we're thinking for future this is just how long a meeting generally is yeah <laughs> yeah
point are you pointing out that i was being enthusiastic there jonathan is that what you're saying you're um, being very optimistic with an hour and 15 minutes but i it's i don't know it's worth i would i mean i would rather learn more but right now yeah, you're saying in general like that's short it seems like yeah what um is McCrary, is are you done now? Mr. So, so that yeah. So, presentation. So, so it sounds like Alexis is done with presentation. Mm -hmm. Did you have some oh, sort of list of projects that they're currently working on besides the WRI Explorer? Uh, sounds like that's done. Yeah, that's done. Um, basically, not really. Dark Sky Ordinance, you were supposed to um, But there's not really much to it. Yeah, it's just like we should have one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big recommendation. Um, I know. Yeah, I think I that. Um, I would like my street lights to be like. Yeah, Jim is also into that, and he's the chair of the zoning commission, so I think that's something. Did you say Jim? Yeah, Jim Berg. Jim Berg. Oh, I have. Yeah. So he's um, also looking into that. But. Yeah, I mean that's that's a really I actually dropped a bunch of stuff for that on our Google Drive so we could you know that's the kind of thing you can review yeah, I uh, think separately. There's there's a lot of opportunity there and that's part of the sort of agenda discussion that we'll need to have. Yeah. I think of the our next things working that might be relatively high priority just because of Northwestern coming in and replacing streetlights. And so that was the thing. I was talking to uh, the girl down in Red Lodge. Alexis, can you uh, speak up a little bit? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Northwestern just replaced all the, their streetlights in Red Lodge, and everybody was kind of pissed because they don't they don't have a dark side ordinance on the books. They want to write one, but Northwestern basically was like, "We will comply with the letter of the law, but we will not go above." Um, so it's like. If if you want if when if when when Northwestern does come in and replace all their streetlights, uh, they're gonna That's only soon. yeah they're gonna I think they already reached out to parks at least about it. Um, so that would be a good thing. To what are their streetlights? They're not. They're just in on Park Street, or do we have a map of what yeah. Northwestern is? Actually, that's one thing that I was doing. Um, is I've mapped out on everything south of south of the tracks in Livingston. I've mapped every streetlight, and between which one's city, which one's Northwestern. There's a lot of Northwestern streetlights. Um, sneakily, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it until yeah, you count them, and then you're like, wow. They're in my um, like little cul-de-sac. Yeah, really cool. there's a lot like weirdly in the alleys behind houses. I doubt that they're all on because otherwise I'm sure people would be complaining all the time. Um, so, but uh, that's one thing I'm gonna do is go out and finish doing all the north side streetlights. Um, and there is a map, I know, I mean, like the G, like Steve, the GIS guy has it, you can go talk to him, I'm sure he can show it to you or share it or something like that. It's basically just red or blue dots on the map. Um, yep. But yeah. Will you please, when you finish that inventory, will you please send it to the board? Yeah, that I don't, is, that is something yeah, I'm that, sure there's a way to, yeah, it's just like on, um, they have like a map app and I just have this iPad that I've been using, so oh, sure. map, yeah, app. yeah, it's like it has a collection of all their maps and I just yeah. have been updating it, so, um, but I'm sure I could talk to Steve and figure out there's, I'm sure that he could publish it or something like that. Yeah, just however, or, yeah, or even, yeah, just show it to you, give you print out or whatever. Well, what we need is 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 data though. Mm -hmm. We need we need to know um, from an efficiency standpoint when we consider what agenda items we're coming up and yeah. what we're gonna tackle first. Well um, this is a GIS program, they don't know. they'll just even but, export the table so yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. that long that's right. all the yeah. information with it. So. Yeah. Um, it is literally though just well for the Livingston streetlights it does have and for some of it might just be living street lights. It does have meter information, but for a lot of them, it's just like here's where the street light is. It's on the corner of H and Clark. Sure. Um, because in order to figure out wattages or anything like that, um, you basically have to go up with a very tall ladder and look at it. Um, but also, you, I have all the street light bills from Northwestern. So and you can look at those and it shows you because northwestern doesn't charge on usage it charges on wattage so it's like 
this is an 80 watt bulb. We charge you this much money. Got it. Every single month. It's the same every single month. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Do you also have types in that? Or is that a. What do you mean by things? Uh, it, you include bulb type. I mean, I know you have, you mentioned wattage, mm -hmm. but is there just in general a type or a color or anything mm -hmm. like that on the uh, data? No. That's fine. Um, I'm just asking. I don't think any of it. Yeah, it's basically like, it's very easy to get. You just have to go and look at every single street light and do that. They don't yes. have. So, um, God, if only we had <laughs> access to a really awesome high school team. <laughs> Hey. hey. I want the whole town around the cotton to be on the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I know every single, I biked up and down every single street now. I look a little sketchy, so that's okay. I wore a, like, you're not the, I wore a, um, well, I was, like, in people's backyards. There were definitely some people who were, like, what is this? I, also, I had all this, like, electrical equipment, so I think some people thought, probably thought I was, like, stealing all their social security. <laughs> But I wore a reflective vest. I looked official. There you go. Some guy at a construction site asked me if they were violating OSHA laws. I was really? like, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I guess I really look official. Was <laughs> like the city said to you? I was like, no. They would know if they were violating. Like, what are you doing? Why are you so concerned the city? Yeah. He's like, I know I'm violating OSHA. So, yeah. Is, is everyone okay if we move on to the yeah, next okay. topic? So the request, the request is. Uh, Alexis, if you would just, um, you know, both on the the data for the presentation yeah. for today, as well as um, ideas for uh, incorporating um, conservation and mm -hmm. other things into city procedures, mm -hmm. um, so that we can look at and make recommendations. And finally, uh, any of the uh, results and and particular just the the you know, silly details of that mm -hmm. um, inventory study that you did of the lights. Um, mm -hmm. Those would be really helpful mm -hmm. to us um, because we will definitely we'll definitely use it. Okay. Um, yeah. Your your work will go will not go for naught. <laughs> um, is everyone okay if we go ahead and move on to the next? Yeah, let's do it. McCray, you're up. Do you want me to go up there because I have it on here too, and I can look off. Um, it is, I think you're, yeah, it is <laughs> up to you. Yeah, you can see it from there, right? Yeah. Okay, so you put this on and the I can initiative. I see what's going on. Exactly. This yeah. works good for me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see that far. We need to get him to put this TV up. Yeah, yeah we will. I know. So this is a lot smaller of a presentation. <laughs> than That's us. okay. So let's Not see. your job. Shorter yeah. is better in these tiny, these short meetings here. <laughs> um, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Let's share this. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to and doing this. We really appreciate it. Thank you for being in our community. Uh, present. I put that in your guys' meeting. Okay. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. It's all you. Just tell me when to go. Okay. Has the floor. Well, this is all about green initiative at part time. And all please right. speak up because I know Jonathan was having a little hard time hearing from there. So, so anyway, so what we do, we would do all the recycling for part high. That's most of what we do, I think, every single Wednesday after school. And this year, Earth Day week, we're doing a whole, whole kind of like, um like activities all week. So Monday is a trash fashion show where we make clothes out of trash and do a fashion show, I guess. And then uh, the re reusable bag sewing day. Uh, you can see a lot of those at Tom Country, they use those. And then we have assembly and the school, I think the entire school goes out and does community service for the day. So that's pretty cool, yeah. And I'll talk more about the Green Business Award. And then we have a 5K race on Thursday. Sweet. Is it a race of fundraiser? I, for your... I think it is. Yeah. So what, when is Earth Day week? April. <laughs> yeah, I feel like isn't Earth Day April 20th? I think so. Maybe. No, I am not. Usually. 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 
Yeah, you can go. Does it, oh, I was going to ask, does this stuff, is this mostly during school or is it at, just right after school on those days? Or I think, except for Wednesday, it's after school. It might be something that like people can skip classes and come to mm -hmm. to like, do it with us, but I'm not sure yet. And so the Green Business Award is given to the most environmentally friendly business in Livingston. So like what they're doing to increase like environmental sustainability, like reduce emissions. Um, and also we're looking into a compost system for Park High and it'd be really cool if like the person that came in, I used that they work with compost mm -hmm. so we could work with them too. Yeah. And Happy Trash Ken and Bozeman does commercial composting too. And I think we've worked with them once or twice before and we're thinking of working out a deal with them. It would just be hard because I think it costs some money. And, but yeah. Yeah, I think I think Happy Trash Can was the one that did all of the farmers markets. I was just, oh, I don't know about that, exactly. but I know that they pick up in Livingston, they or do at least their website up. says that. Yeah, they do <laughs> have a Livingston pickup. That is true. Um, and so would that be would that be a commercial composting of like lunch, like lunch exactly, food yeah. waste, and it would be every food waste in the school. So I think it would probably be once a week. I guess but they would pick it up maybe once a month. And we could also use the compost in our gardens that we have in the greenhouse. Yeah. So yeah, farm to school is doing food waste audits now mm -hmm. at the high school. And so they're getting a measure of how much food is thrown away. Oh, they do that um, for vegan at uh Eastside also. Those are yep. fourth and fifth graders. Yep. They throw away 40% of their milk. An inventory. <laughs> Yeah, the milk is 40% because wow. every kid is given a thing of milk. You can choose chocolate, which like you get chocolate every day, which is not something I had as a kid. Like, <laughs> but so every kid gets either chocolate or normal milk. And like you but it's you not, can't say it's not on a want. System. Yeah, it's, it's just, just so you get it. I mean, yeah. if you're lactose intolerant, but like you just get it. And so a lot of kids don't want it. It's, it's, bec dumb. it's because they use the milk as part of the their nutrition yeah you know they have nutrition guidelines that they have to reach right so, so they waste to check meet some guidelines. Guidelines. yes yeah. exactly um so you, <laughs> but you lose you lose federal funding if you don't if That's your lunch true. doesn't meet the guidelines so i mean uh, you know i just I, I think it's so cool i love that um i mean just picking up though there were in, in composting and and getting to measure the compost and then like, because I'm sure they weigh it. Uh, maybe they do. <laughs> Happy Cat Trash Can weighs it as part of their what they charge. It would be invaluable to things like the food waste audit yeah. and stuff. We mm -hmm. did a presentation by the same person. Mm -hmm. about. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. And some improvements. Uh, we have solar energy that's being put into our school right now, and I'll talk about that. Um, we want to have the school take over the recycling so we could focus on more like city, I guess, like doing more in the city and community service. And we would want more recycling bins and signage because there's not that many in the school and people don't know where to find them. So they just throw their food away or like their recycling. And then, yeah, compost in the school gardens. And yeah, climate change brought up in the curriculum. I don't know if we could, like, I don't know how we would do that, but I think it would be cool if we could try to get climate change talked a lot more about. Yeah. I might be able to do, like, based on my high school knowledge of, like, a long time ago, but uh, an independent study that ends up being, like, a group thing. Um, yeah. If you found a teacher that uh, was re receptive to basically facilitating that yeah but um usually yeah. there's something like kind of a free form class style that's offered yeah and i think i know one of our club members has done an independent study just to work like solely on green initiative and so she's helping out a lot okay cool 
Yeah, that's great. I um, I think also, you know, um, we definitely like to know if you'd like climate change to be a priority in the city government. You know, that, that I think the green initiative um, has a voice here in the city government and in any of the boards or commissions, right? I mean, yeah. of course. Um, but the fact that you're here, both as a board member and as, you know, a member of this club is, I think, really important. Mm -hmm. um, well, not to mention this high school is like a big building and there's a lot of people there. Yeah. It's a government operation, like, mm -hmm. and it's a cool way to teach some of that stuff as well while it's happening in the school at a level if we can you know i don't know exactly how we implement some of this stuff but if things can be implemented and then you guys can learn about it or teach about it or bring it into your lesson i think that's really cool and starts bringing up that next generation who may or not, may not be living here but you can take it to wherever you go or keep it in town and yeah that's pretty valuable i would think yeah um go home and teach your parents can, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and we could talk about oh actually you have a whole slide oh my gosh <laughs> okay um so yeah this slide base <laughs> this is great uh this is mostly just funds i guess i tried to find other things but i think money would be the best thing to help with signs and extra bins and i guess just to put the job of recycling to the school because they don't really want to do it, but it needs to be done. So we're doing that right now, but it'd be cool if they could do that. And then, yeah, and then I have some slides about solar energy too. And so our goal is a 50 kilowatt system on the school. At $120,000, we've raised a lot of that so far, and there's all of the donations and money that we've received. Wow. And I think. So you I, already got the 33% funding, the USD funding? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. nice. Did you guys apply for the REAP grant? Oh, you're a nonprofit. You can't. No. Um, <laughs> right? And I, Our school's a nonprofit? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I talk. I don't have it up on here, but I talked to my teacher, like the person who runs the club, and I think every, I think every year it's about ten thousand dollars. So in like twelve years, we're gonna like reach that point where we like even off, and then we're gonna save a bunch of money to pass that. So, oh, the yes, yeah, so you're talking about the the payback period. Yeah, it's about twelve years. It's about twelve years. I think I would have to double check, but yeah, no, that, that jives with some of the paybacks. I mean, Danielle, you're the expert on that. But. It would be 12 years if you took off all that was donated and then with the schools. Mm -hmm. So like 120,000, it'll be lower than that. We'll get a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. But hopefully, yeah. unless someone's being mean, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> but a 50 kilowatt system would make like 55,000 kilowatt hours a year. And I don't know how much the school, I don't know how much the school produce or how much, not the produce, but they use, but mm -hmm. 55,000 kilowatt hours a year at 0 0.081 dollars per kilowatt is something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do math in my head. <laughs> I was going to say, I stopped doing math a long time ago. I do a lot of math, but I don't do that. I, I do formulas now. That's my thing. Um, that's cool. So for that, so it's yeah, going to be forty five hundred dollars yeah. a year. Forty five hundred a year. So the payback, if you don't have any funding or grants, if you were just a pay out of pocket, is going to be like twenty years. Twenty, probably twenty three, twenty four years. Yeah. But if you take down all these grants, you can make it. Or all these donations and grants, the DDQ and the USD funding and whatnot, then you can make it look a hell of a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Just how like used to sell solar systems. So. Do you, um, yeah, about the bid on the solar power project? I mean, who are they? Who's sort of running that piece, and and how's that going? Um, there are several solar 
suppliers that have been part of like Solarize, right? Are those the type of solar you know? I don't know. want to. I don't know. I know they've sent out like requests for like RFPs. Yep. Um, I don't know if they've gotten anything back yet. So yeah. I think what when I was talking to her, she was saying to get that one hundred and twenty number thousand dollar number, they basically called people up and were like, "Hey, what do you think?" Sure. And then this is what they thought, and then they were like, "Well, now that we have all this money," and so I think they're kind of in the like let's make it more concrete stage. Yeah, when you turn it into a big process, you've got competition. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be, it'll be way lower. And it has to I'd say it's probably going for about 100. Yeah, maybe even 98 for a school. That's great. Yeah. 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 And then the next slide is like people that we've applied for other grants. Yes. And so I think a lot of them were really close to getting those grants. And, Awesome. That. Yeah, so, nice yeah. job. Yeah, super cool. <laughs> I mean, that is, is a lot of work. Yeah, that is a serious this. amount of grants. That is really, and a lot of it is, um, if you go back to that first slide, yeah. the ten thousand dollars we sent out letters to people, and just like individuals contributing money, ten thousand dollars. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Cool. Mm -hmm. Are you selling the naming rights? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, where's the plaque? <laughs> I think, where's the... does that really must or not let you do that? And I think, I actually think somebody was talking about that, and then somebody said, oh, but you can't do that with the Northwestern USD grant. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you can't, like, name, like, like you fine. can't name it or something. Plan. Yeah, it's like, you can't I'm name it. they only gave you guys 32%, because they did 100%. They've done 100% before to schools, but they were, like, big, sandy, High school mm -hmm. on the res. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. they're on the res. Or yeah. have or have our high school got one. Mm. And all it was a well, hundred percent. There was one on the news yeah, and like in like That's because the system was probably right next to a busy road. And how long like the big we northwest percent. That's right. Yeah. Their high school got more. That double. Did they? Yeah. 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 And they yeah. like in time. Huh. Lame. Well, they were also saying because it's Livingston is kind of on the highway ninety, so they want. Other more rural locations, it's like where it's concentrated uh, geographically. Yeah. Oh, still not <laughs> no, but um, who go back to the other one? There was another, no, the other one, the next slide. Um, there's also one that they weren't looking at, and that's who's funding the Yellowstone Museum um, solar array. Hmm. And that is the local funds that were from Burlington Northern and that. And Natalie was told about it, but she didn't think that, that was possible. But then now there was some museum is getting theirs funded. Yeah, Burlington Northern is really interested in some of the, but the railroad historical stuff that yeah. they they mm -hmm. do. Um, uh, yeah, that's a really good uh, point. Yeah, so is that. What uh, what can we do? How about, how about, yeah, that's right, you have a slide for that. <laughs> no, 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 and this is, this is just an open question, right? It's like, mm -hmm. what, what can we do specifically? Is there anything that, that, that has come up that we can specifically do? Um, I mean, this, this is, we're an advisory board to the city commission, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we have, you know, we have technical chops. And that sort of thing. I mean, we have the ability to help, and we also have the ability to provide. Um, but, but really, as a board, what can we do based on your priorities as a club? That's that's what I want to know. And I see recycling as being a big problem for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, who does composting? What's well, hard? Those budgeting. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard because I think okay. technically the di the district is separate from the city and is. county completely. So I mean, there's like weird. So I don't know how. You well, what I see, what I see district. here is that if the city had a recycling program that included pickup, oh, yeah, for example, mm -hmm. there there would be there would be um, that would make it much harder for the school district to say no to a recycling program yeah. if they can literally just put it out and have it picked up with the garbage that they already put out. Yeah. yeah. For example, um, the uh, compost is the same thing. 
So like focus on a compost program. Uh, if there's a compost program that is city owned and operated, then having, you know, the clubs at the school saying, hey, we'd really like the school to compost here is another reason for us to focus on mm -hmm. talking about that. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the climate change thing, because you talked about having it integrated into the school curriculum. Um, and, you know, for us, if we're to look at climate change uh, as, you know, I think we should, the question is, how do we incorporate the feedback from the Green Club into, into that as well? So um, what can we do? What does the Green Club want the city to do in order to talk about, in order to have climate change? Do you need a climate, do you want us to try to develop a climate action plan? Well, but maybe this is something that you take back to your right. club. Okay, I'm like, you're putting yeah. a lot of pressure yeah. on him at this week. Yeah, no, I said go, that's what <laughs> okay. I said, go okay. go talk about it with them, but but like that's that's the kind of thing, like what can we specifically do? If you come back with specific requests, especially after making this presentation and informing us of what you're doing, um, we, we can definitely consider that as good input into how we proceed over the next, you know, insert amount of time here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think definitely recycling and composting would be like the two main things. And then I could talk about them, talk with them about climate change and anything else that they think because I talked to one person only about uh, like what we do and what we might like use from you guys. Mm -hmm. And that was the person doing the independent study, but I could talk to other people doing it and I could talk to our teacher about it too. Yeah because they might have other ideas, so, yeah. And if you want one of us to come, when we get our act together, if you want <laughs> us to come and uh, do a presentation with you, that's yeah. another thing. Okay. Thanks so much for bringing us. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. Jonathan, you have any questions? Yeah, McRae, um, how much has the school contributed or, I mean, it looks like they haven't. What is the, what indication have they given about their willingness to contribute to that? Yeah, the so, yeah, willingness to, to do, is that for, you dropped off at the end there, recycling or, or solar? No, just solar is what I was talking about. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, are you talking about like if they're, like, if they want it to happen? I think put forth money, right? Yeah, the money is what I was talking about. I don't think they've well, they done don't anything for money, like, which is why we're raising a bunch of money yeah. for that. If you make it happen, yeah, they had to go take steps to say, like, look, we're making it happen. Please approve this. And they're like, okay, we'll let you have, we'll let you do it. Yeah. That's kind of your approach. Well, that doesn't help with Northwestern's approval either. <laughs> mm. Um, I didn't really hear any of that. <laughs> so, yeah, so, no. so, yeah, basically, no. no. <laughs> Jonathan, that was the answer that, <laughs> that they, that, that they had been told to, yeah, that sounds great, but they're not putting any money. There, is no, money. there is no money. Okay. That might change, but. If it, if it takes a long time to get the solar array installed. Because then they have to reapply for the USDA grant and whatnot. Sure. Yeah, actually, that is a question. Do, I, all the, do any of those grants expire you, that you know of? Yes. I don't. Anytime yeah. soon? I mean, the, the grant, so yeah. the, the USB grant does? Yeah, it does. And you'll get like every year. Some, you'll get some extensions. Yeah, there's kind of a, it was, by the beginning of this year there have to be some serious momentum and then by the end end of the year it should be installed or i thought even this fall it should be installed but then they'll offer extensions based on where you are with your fundraising like if that twenty thousand gets kicked off um that could help if you're making an effort then they'll it. Or like you can show you're making progress, and they'll be more likely yeah. to extend. It's like a yeah, not a quantitative decision of the quality. Yeah, I think. And that DEQ grant, I've never heard of it. So that's 
Um, Do you know what that is? I don't. Okay. A DEQ grant? Yeah, I mean, I guess they just give, they do just give grants out, but I don't know where. That might be a pipe. That might, I don't know if that'd be a pipe loan. Is that not the DEQ loan? Um, I mean, I'd spread it right off of here, and this is right. what I was given. Oh, yeah. If you guys want to pass that around. DEQ grant. Interesting. <laughs> the low emission. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Let's let's try to wrap up if we can here. I wanted to. Um, I know what we have to do. Yeah, what do we, we have to do? How do we end this thing? How do we end this? That thing? was the only thing on the agenda. We can end it. We're we're done. We can end it. Yeah. Um, we can end it now. I do like to give. Um, we have to create if our it's next okay. agenda though. Well, that doesn't. We don't have to do that right this minute though, right? It can be a. Doing. It's really helpful to do it next. I, uh, so, so as the, let's just do an open floor for agenda items um, for the next for the next agenda. Any recommendations for agenda items? Uh, new Energy Corporation can introduce yourself. An introduction for the New Energy Corporation. Sure. <laughs> um, so ask whether she wants to. <laughs> um, I mean, she knows this is like. Part of her job, so presumably yeah. she would not have accepted well, it's the nice job. to see your work be used mm -hmm. too. Jonathan, you have any uh, agenda items, recommendations for the next uh, meeting? Um, Alexis, that'll be your last meeting, right? Yep. Are, are you going to have any sort of recommendations or anything just like uh, um, maybe like something about how to move yeah. forward with everything you've done or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I could do that. I was going to put some into the drive or whatever, but I could also just do a little. I think you can also do like a list of what the city's already working on. Yeah. Yeah, I could do like a towards conservation five minute rundown of run down yeah. what's going on and yeah. what right. recommendations. And Northwestern have. Energy Light thing gave us like a deadline to figure out something. Yeah. So something that has like mm -hmm. deadlines that okay. will be affected will be affected quickly and mm -hmm. that would be great. Cool. Yeah. Um I've got well I've got a couple, but I'll I'll wait. Uh, so, Jonathan, anything else that you want to have on our next agenda? I think that's fine with me. Just an um, update from Alexis, like moving forward. Okay. Amy? Are we allowed to put? Oh, sorry. Um, well, I sent you that email, but that was kind of more like my brain dump. Not necessarily like we need to talk about it all next meeting, but mm -hmm. that's basically I was getting away from some of the building energy stuff and looking at some other options for conservation in the city. Yep. So I don't know how, I don't really know how we move forward from like we, talking about I, stuff to like doing stuff. That's exactly what I was going to ask. Like, can I we do a like an agenda item of just brainstorming yep. ideas? We can, right? Yep, absolutely. So brainstorming agenda. <laughs> yeah, so we could, we could do that as a working meeting if we'd like. It doesn't have to be an official board meeting, but we can also just have it as part of, as the agenda for our board meeting next. Next. I think it'd be good to have it on the agenda since yep. it's so restrictive to. It's it's nice to be able to like brainstorm as a group. Yeah. So I would like. Um, I actually that was my that was my thing for the next one too. <laughs> no, which is because yeah, I'm an engineer. I like getting stuff done, and so talking about what we're going to talk about is exhausting <laughs> for me. Um, meta talking. Really annoying. Very so, uh, so I wanted to have our next meeting. If it, I, I would love to have our next meeting be fu fully focused on a massive brain dump okay. on all the yeah. possible things that we could be talking about and looking at, and trying to lay out sort of what our path looks like for the next year, so that we, so that you know, a, the agendas for the next board meetings after that are purely focused on a single thing, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So that we can really deep dive on it, make sure we get public input for that, you know, make sure everyone that might have an opinion on it gets invited to it so that, so that we can get some discussion and then, um, and then 
the way that that usually works is then you have to, I guess you'd have to have the discussion, talk about the things that we're going to either, you know, recommend to the city commission or whatever that are on that topic. So for example, if it's lighting, we, we had this really messy review of what our current dark sky ordinance is and what our net, you know, what our recommended replacement dark sky ordinance is. And then we get all the public comment we can on all those things. And then we have a resolution to, you know, edit all that stuff and put it together. And then we actually vote on it the next meeting. So, you know, uh, no topic will, I, I think, will ever take just one meeting. Right. So, so that's, and we can condense that a little bit if there's stuff that's, that's urgent, we can go to a working meeting. But, um, I, yeah, I, I, that, that would be my recommendation as an agenda item for the next time. And basically, that's it. I don't think we have time for anything else. No. I think that's perfect. Sam, on your we have the city strategic plan. Yeah. No, we go ahead. <laughs> this is our oh, second meeting. We're new, new. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, are we supposed to have one? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I think what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like you're still filming your next year. Yeah. Yeah. My I thought solar eyes was one of. It was on my mind. Right? That's why I was because so. YBCC is gonna run another Solarize I think campaign. It's official. I think it's official now. I was hesitant because I was like, are we doing it or are we not? Yeah. I think but, it's a yes. Yeah. So, so how we work together on that would be great. I could give a little update on what's going on or if you're here. No, you, you should. It's your last so, day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys want to know. And I think the next meeting for that is on the 24th of this month. Okay, so so I can ask at that meeting, and then hopefully come back with some like, here's what we're doing, here's what we're doing, and here's how you guys can help. They did they did ask if I could start speaking to people uh -huh. about it, and uh -huh. so I was saying I'm meeting with you on some rooms. Can I? Yeah. And they said yes. Oh so, yeah. So official. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan, were you piping in there? I was gonna say maybe we should just have an. YBCC update from a representative officially agenda on the meeting just because to yep. try and get up to speed. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I've got three, I've got four agenda items for the next one. We've got ask the, the new energy core person to, to show up. What's your deal? <laughs> Um, ask Alexis to give a presentation, um, uh, well, Alexis to give a report, yeah. we'll say, you don't need to do it, I'll but one, report yeah. on recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and again, as I said, it's may, it's so much easier if you send an email beforehand yeah. to the group and we yeah. have a chance and then it'll be much more efficient because mm -hmm. we can just read it ahead of time yeah. and then we'll, we'll be able to just ask you questions. Um, and then ask ask a representative from YBCC if they want, whoever wants to be here officially from YBCC, um, but I'll send, I'll, I can send an email to the, you know, the co-chairs the co mm -hmm. um, to see what, uh, if, if someone can come and do an up, a, just a 10 minute update on what they're doing. Yeah, because the, yeah. give time, yeah, time because, so we can keep it yep. under control. So we can brainstorm. Because we really, <laughs> and then the, really so the final agenda right. item <laughs> is is uh, uh, is, a, is a strategy discussion mm -hmm. around um, uh, agenda items for the next year. And don't forget about yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's in there. And accepting okay. our board tools, voting on. Oh yeah, voting on. So let's make the YBCC thing a scheduled public comment at the beginning with a time limit. Then that's the best way to like format that on the agenda. Okay. Scheduled public comment. Cool. Thank you. Um, Two things I want to put on the radar. Um, for YB YBCC, one of the objectives was to. Um, work with financial institutions on certain loan packages, low interest loan packages, besides the DEQ loan, because they get pretty bottleneck, um, especially with the, with the rate cake happening. And Missoula Credit Union was the only one that was offering something for 
um, I don't know, uh, eco and energy efficiency, and our local is going to be putting a package together. It's not public and it's not finalized, but it goes from e-bikes to energy efficiency to solar arrays. There's also the Montana Facility Science Authority. They offer funding for Montana facilities and FFA. Montana oh. Facility Science Authority. They offer financing for like to the facilities, more like building upgrades and but energy, like energy efficiency building upgrades. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, more for energy efficiency. Yeah. And then are you guys aware of the of Bullock's um climate, what's it called? Um, the it's the CSC report yeah. um that comments are due by the 31st of March. So I don't know if you guys are Oof, really um, yeah the draft's out. And that's something that you might want to put on the state's responsibility to get you know climate change curriculum into your education. That might be a place for that. That's just an idea. Montana Climate Solutions Plan. I can send that to you if you want it. Well we we'll, so we can yeah we can look at that. Yeah just send it to the message board. That's the best thing, because then it's, you know, everything in there is public, by the way, right? Anybody can see all, inspect all things, not your email address, actually, but, um, so I actually need a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion, just let's, let's wrap this up. I'll make a motion to have the agenda items we discussed, the YBCC update, which is a scheduled public comment, voting on the recommended meeting time change, um, uh, talking to the new Energy Corp person, um, uh, having Alexis give a report, uh, a summary report on her recommendations she's going to send to us. And then finally, a strategy discussion. That's the big bulk of it. Strategy discussion around agenda items for the next year. And a list of projects that he's currently working on. Mm -hmm. Alexis. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. Alexis. So she's got that. So I listed, <laughs> I I listed all those, a lot. There's a lot of many those <laughs> report, uh on mm -hmm. recommendations and active projects. Okay, so so to be clear, the motion is to have the agenda be uh, all of that I just listed, <laughs> but but with her with her having the active projects, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, seconded by Danielle. Uh, all all who approve, say aye. Aye. I hear no nays. Jonathan, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Now I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second that. Seconded by Danielle. <laughs> I like talking to you. Any nays? I'm really hungry. <laughs> I know. No nays. The, the meeting is adjourned. Cool. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Nice. Thanks for keeping us on track, man. Uh, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.